I came across a thing on the internet the other day. It said a recent study found that the average American golfer walks about 900 miles a year. Another study found American golfers drink on average 22 gallons of alcohol a year. That means on average, American golfers get about 41 miles to the gallon. <laughs> kind of makes you proud. <laughs> so I have a chapter on the phony revolution. It's called 205 Easy Ways to Go Green. What do you mean? I'll just read the beginning. We're, we're not having a green revolution, but I just picked up Working Mother magazine at the doctor's office and read the cover story, 205 Easy Ways to Save the Earth. It's so whetted my appetite for easy ways to save the planet that I googled for more. And boy, did I find more. 20 easy ways you can help the Earth. These are all magazine and book titles. Easy ways to protect our planet. Simple ways to save the Earth. 10 ways to save the Earth. 20 quick and easy ways to save the planet. 5 ways to save the Earth. The 10 easiest ways to green your home. 365 ways to save the Earth. 100 ways you can save the Earth. 1,001 ways to save the Earth. 101 ways to heal the Earth. 10 painless ways to save the planet. 21 ways to save the Earth and make Make more money, 14 ways to be an everyday environmentalist, easy ways to go green, 40 easy ways to save the planet, 10 simple ways to save the earth, help save the planet, easy ways to make a difference, 50 ways to save the earth, 50 simple ways to save the earth and get rich trying, top 10 ways to green up your sex life, I'm not making this up, okay. <laughs> vegan condoms and solar vibrators, innovative ways to save planet Earth, 101 things designers can do to save the Earth, five weird and wacky ways to save the Earth, five ways to save the world, and for those with a messianic streak, but who are short of both cash and time, 10 ways to save the Earth and money in under a minute. <laughs> that's not a revolution, friends, that's a party. There is one word, you should never use for this project, and that's easy. No one said it better than Michael Maniotti, he's a professor of political science at Allegheny College. He did a brilliant essay in the Washington Post that began like this. Paul Revere didn't race through the streets of Middlesex County hawking a book on the lazy revolutionary. Franklin Roosevelt didn't mobilize the country's energies by listing 10 easy ways to oppose fascism. And it's unlikely that Martin Luther King Jr.'s drafts of his I Have a Dream speech or his letter from Birmingham jail imagined a practical politics of change rooted in individualistic, consumer-centered actions. The greatest environmental problem confronting us isn't melting ice, faltering rain, or flattening oil supplies or rising gasoline prices. Rather, it's what happens when Americans ask, what can I do to make a difference? And we're treated like children by environmental elites and political leaders too timid to call forth the best of us and too blind to do what it takes to make us a great nation. What would be a serious revolution? The chapter I have on this is called The Energy Internet. And that's basically what we're going to need. We're going to need a merger of IT and ET. And the energy internet would be basically a smart grid that goes into a smart home that is connected to a smart car, basically, where all your devices are on the internet and can day trade electrons for you. That's actually what it looks like. If you think this sounds far-fetched, please do not fetch it too far because a pilot of this concept has already been undertaken in the Olympic Peninsula, Washington, by the Pacific Northwest National Lab in Bonneville Power. And they actually showed me what it works. And the importance of this system, basically, is that your utility can basically adjust all the power in your home, both to match their load and also to match their renewable energy, which they'd be able to use a lot more of. And you, of course, would be able to manage your own energy efficiency in totally automated ways. Without an energy internet that basically connects clean electrons to a smart home, to a smart car, you will never get the scale that you need. Now, how would we get such a system? Unfortunately, I don't have time to go into detail about this, but I want to talk a little bit about how we get that, this kind of system. And I have two chapters on that. The first chapter is called The Stone Age Didn't End Because We Ran Out of Stones. Okay, <laughs> all right. And The Stone Age Didn't End, that's actually a quote from Sheikh Ahmed Zaki Amani, the Saudi oil minister, who was warning his OPEC colleagues, boys, boys, he told them, be careful. The Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stones. Do not raise oil prices so high that all those Americans go off and hire Dean Kamen 
to take those crazy ideas he's got and actually bring them to scale. Okay, that's what it was all about, okay? That's what it's all about. So if we want to get an energy internet fed by abundant, cheap, clean, reliable electrons, and friends, that's the holy grail. That's what we're looking for. Abundant, cheap, clean, reliable electrons, because only if we got abundant, cheap, clean, reliable electrons could we deal with climate change, petro-dictatorship, biodiversity loss, energy poverty, and energy source, resource supply and demand. That is the cure. So how do we get abundant, cheap, clean, reliable electrons to feed into an energy internet? You have to have a price signal. This is an innovation problem, okay? This is a problem, and hearing Dean before this is perfect because we don't need a Manhattan Project. I used to think that. I apologize for ever saying it. It is the dumbest idea in the world, okay? The idea that 12 people are going to go off to Los Alamos and invent abundant, cheap, clean electrons. What we need is 100,000 Dean Caymans in 100,000 garages trying 100,000 things, okay? So maybe 10 of them will come up with that holy grail of abundant, cheap, clean, reliable electrons. Now you may think we have that today. We don't have that. What we have is not a bubble in green investing. We have a bubble in articles about green investing, okay? <laughs> I have to tell you, last year, total VC money into green investing was $5 billion. The height of the IT revolution, total VC money, almost $100 billion in the year 2000. If $5 billion fell off the table, nobody even reached over to pick it up at the height of the IT revolution. That's what we had last year because we don't have a market. The reason Dean can invent all those things and the big companies in this country don't gobble them up is because there is no market signal. They know what Yamani said. They're afraid the price, even when it's $4.50 a gallon, is going to go back to 2 or $3 and their green investing is all going to go up in smoke. Without a carbon tax, without a floor on gasoline or oil, you are never going to have a market. Without a market, you will not have scale. Without a scale, without scale, all you have is a green hobby. Right now we have a country full of green hobbyists. We do not have yet a scale alternative. We, you'll know when we do, when there are 100,000 Dean Caymans working on abundant, cheap, clean, reliable electrons to feed a smart grid into a smart home, into a smart car.